we hoped to do because we were physically outmatched uh, up front and especially experience wise and they've got the big player up there in, in Brad Shear that we would control the ball with our short and intermediate passing game and uh, by and large I felt that our plan will work. We start out first play of the game, made a first down on a short pass. Um, we were into the game and into the game early. Whether we were going to be able to run or not would be whether we could get them out of their run techniques and into their pass rush techniques. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that because they were just simply stronger than us. But the thing that bothered me most about the game, and I think it, uh, you look back at it, it's just a misplay. But we had six or seven drop balls that were very critical to us in the game. An opportunity on a fumble that uh, didn't turn our way that at the game 21 to seven that uh, I felt if we had held the ball as well as we'd been holding it every year, that we were throwing the ball well, our young people were pass protecting better than they had been in the past. Uh, we had our offensive line back together again for the first time since the Rice game. So uh, I felt that we would hold up even if they blitzed and they did, we held up on the blitz well. Uh, Sometimes our patterns are open, but we just held our drop balls. I felt that we would have controlled the ball much longer, and this is what we needed to do, was to keep the ball away from Texas, and we needed to do it with our passing game. Well, let's take a look at the first half action and uh, see how things transpire. We kick off, and Steve Mormon, our freshman kicker from Burleson, kicks the ball out of the end zone, uh, which we expect him to do. They had won the toss and elected to receive, and. Uh, we decide to kick off uh, with the Sun there. They come, uh, and here's a big play by our freshman uh, defensive end, John Wade. The big play there, and uh, there's uh, Wesley Roberts and, and a host of others in on the play, but that was a big play. They go into the eye, and there's Earl, and there's a big hit by uh, Jimmy Bayuk, our freshman linebacker. Anytime you can hit with that kind of power and velocity, and now we make a big mistake. We break coverage into the sideline and and Johnny Lamb Jones just simply outruns our, our cornerback for a touchdown. It's one thing you can't do. We were a little tense and tight going into the game. It, yeah, against Southern Cal, who was the number one team, we weren't that way. There's a big play there, but Johnny Price, he gets off his block, makes a big play on Ainsley. Uh, there's a real short yard he played down there at the goal line. We again make the big stop. By and large, uh, I felt we were a little nervous, a little apprehensive. See, we overplay the quarterback. This is early in the game now. We're doing the things we shouldn't do. We shouldn't do if we were a little more experienced, a little more poised. Here's a big play now by uh, Michael Isaac, our freshman from Leander. He simply runs uh, Ham down and corners him, and uh, Darren Mosley comes in along with Steve Barnes and Billy Neal to make the play for a loss. Michael had a good game this time. Had a good game. Uh, just uh, Steve Bay thrown out here quickly to uh, Mike Renfro. There's a good block here from Michael Milton, and Mike makes the first down. Here's a repeat of the play to the other side. There's a good block from Tony Accomando, and Mike's off again running and goes for another first down. This was a little different set. We'd used a set that we hadn't used the pass play before. Uh, like I said, we were going to control the game with our, or try to control the game with our short passing game. Here's Steve rolling out, hits Mike from across on a crossing pattern, and uh, we have three first downs in a row. We turn the ball over by punt, punting it deep. Uh, there's uh, Earl going into the line. He's hit there by Wesley Roberts, and Steve Barnes recovers. Uh, here's Steve on a rollout. Uh, pattern closed on him. He takes off and runs for about five yards here. Here Steve goes back, sets up, drops the ball off to uh, Chester Trickling, our freshman fullback, and he gets to see uh, uh, we like one yard for the first down. We sneak for the first down, and then we come right back. We hit Renfro here on the post pattern. Uh, they miss the tackle or he breaks the tackle and Mike leaps into the end zone dragging uh, the Texas cornerback with him and we've got the game 21 to uh, seven. Here's uh, Ham Jones breaking uh, a linebacker slip, didn't get to the coverage point and we're in a foot race with a 
pretty fast young man. That's Alan Roberts, our freshman free safety there. I almost guess he makes the tackle. But in one quick play, you can see what their speed do. Here's where we hit early. Fumble the ball in the air. We recover it, but the whistle had blown and blown the ball dead, and we didn't get the ball. Uh -huh. Here's a reverse, and uh, we had a, a blitz on, and our blitzer almost caught the ball in the air. Uh, kind of a late hit there. We, we get a tackle by our cornerback there, uh, Mac Lab Labhart. Here they are down near the goal line. There's a big stop there by Mark Labhart. Uh, coming in from the left side, and there is a real big hit by Steve Barnes, and we drive... Uh, Camelback, this is real tough goal line defense here. In three plays that started on the one, uh, they end up in another play by Steve Barnes. It's now fourth and 10 on the 10. So in three plays, uh, Barry Creighton, our sophomore from Austin, coming in uh, making a final hit on him. Uh, they simply drop the ball up. Lamb simply outruns us to the corner of the end zone and makes a catch. Well, Coach, the, what's great about these youngsters, we were badly bent at halftime, but we sure didn't break. And we've had too many times in the last few years that we broke. And uh, I have to give a, a lot of plaudit to this ball club, but they were bent, but they never broke. Now let's take time out for what Texas scored seven points. We gave them two in that second half, but they did carry the fight to Texas and stayed with it. Let's take a look at the second half film. Here's a reverse play where they, they pin the corner and uh, Earl gets loose. When Earl gets loose, there's not a lot you can do. We did hit him, but we hit him too late. We didn't get there with a pursuit. It was a counter type play. And again, we'd started out the half. We were overplaying a little bit. There's Steve back to pass. Uh, excellent throw. Great catcher by Michael Milton. Young man has just come a, a long way. Uh, here's Steve back to pass again. He sets up strong, delivers again. Again, another great kiss for Michael with, over the middle. Coach, I made a statement to you. I think Michael is the most improved football player on this squad from last year's squad that you had. He's, uh, he's really come a long way. He can be an outstanding receiver. He's already shown the qualities of being an outstanding receiver. He's got the speed that uh, is necessary to play the position. It's a matter of him concentrating on catching the ball. He's doing a good job that there. A big play there by Michael Isaac and uh, Lynn Davis on their quarterback for a loss. I think we had uh, six or seven such type plays where we threw the quarterback for a loss. Here's two big hits by Billy Neal and, and our cornerback, and we, they fumble the football. And then we go to shotgun, and we are just a little excitable down there, and we throw one out of the end zone. Here they go back to pass. Our secondary is now relaxed, started playing the football. Here's a big interception by our freshman, Allen Roberts, free safety. Comes over all the way across the field, makes a jumping catch, doing the things, and showing the range that we knew Allen had. And that's a great interception, Frank. Tremendous. Here's Steve back, good protection, throws the ball in the car, and car sophomore uh, split in. Uh, for the first down, Steve goes back again to throw, sets up, and uh, the pattern closed on him, and he broke back up the middle, where you should break when you scramble, and makes a good run for it. He is hitting Michael again on the delay, and uh, you can see what a little speed can do. He, Breaks down the sideline, picks up a block there from our tight end. Uh, goes halfway out of the stadium. Here's uh, Steve throwing the ball. Great catch by Michael. Touchdown. Great speed. Excellent throw, excellent catch. Just the difference between speed and non-speed. Michael showed a good speed. Here's a blitz by Billy Neal. Strips the ball out. Uh, we are very alertly on the football. Uh, Darren Mosley, our freshman defensive end from Kimball. Now we're starting to play a lot better defense. Here's 
same pass they threw earlier in the game. Mark Lavart's there, takes it away from the receiver, and the young man from Eastern Hills has got him a big interception, and he's a happy young man. And that ended the ball game. We had a couple opportunities to score. Uh, we didn't take advantage of them late in the game. Uh, we gave some young men experience that we felt they needed experience and uh, might have changed maybe if we'd have kept our experienced players in, but uh, we felt we must progress our program also. The whole team, that's right. Well, Coach, you know we have now scored more points this year with two games to go. That's the most points represented since 1973. And along these veins in your kicking game, Tony Biasati has now set a TCE record. He's kicked 20 out of 20 this year, extra points. And in the vein of your kicking game, uh, how is the kicking game? Is it improving? Are you pleased with it? Real pleased with it. Tony is, uh, came when we came here, he wasn't the kicker. He wasn't doing the extra point kicker. He uh, worked hard all spring. He went on the weights. Uh, his range in the spring to the fall has increased over, over 15 yards. He's one of the quickest kickers that I've ever had. Uh, he hadn't missed a extra point I don't uh, expect him to uh, he gives us a good short quick kicker whenever we uh, expect a hard rush Steve Mormon has given us a good kickoff I think in the last seven kickoffs or eight kickoffs that he's made they've only returned one of them uh, he gives us a good long-range field goal kicker he's kicked a 45 and a 56 yard field goal our punters averaging around 42 yards a game he had a big 79 yard punt yesterday that really brought us out of the hole and he met the challenge when we needed it. We were backed up and we needed a good long punt. So I'm pleased with the kicking game. I think it's improved. There, we have a sophomore punter and a freshman place kicker. Unfortunately, uh, we lose Tony, but we expect Steve to step in and do as well as he's done this year. Let's uh, now hear a word from our friends. Well, Jim, it starts on Sunday. We get uh, about four game films that our opponent sends us. We break it down. And it's really like a computer deal. We put it, we break it down, down in distance, formations, uh, personnel, uh, hash marks, and then we compile it. And our game plan is compiled. We kind of break a field down into uh, zones. Like we have a zone from 0 to 20, which is a minus zone. They're coming out. Then from the 20 to 40, the 40 to 40, 40 to 20, and 20 to 0 going in. And once you cross the 50, it's plus zone and uh, we take hash marks into consideration also. So to give an example, like on first and 10 on the left hash mark, uh, say on the 40 yard line, we'll have a defensive call uh, made because of what they've done in the past in that same situation. Uh, we go into that, that's a, a, a breakdown on uh, the stats that we get. Then we have a breakdown on personnel of a person maybe coming into the ball game that they do a certain thing so we have to break that down and chart that uh, you know these things go into a game plan weather also dictates a game plan sometimes now you go into a game when you have uh, good weather you have a game plan set up one way now if it you know you have inclement weather uh, you might have to change your game plan because of the weather and uh, it's a guessing game a lot of the time you know we try to figure out what an opponent is trying to do to us uh, if we feel a certain defense uh, was hurt the week before. We feel that uh, we have to strengthen that defense because the opponent we're going to play will attack that defense, and we have to strengthen it and make it stand up against uh, the things that our opponents might do. I think one thing that possibly our viewers don't realize is that football has got a lot like baseball in that you as defensive coordinator or someone on the defensive staff is at all times giving signals, just like a third base coach or a first base coach, right? Well, we, we call the defenses, uh, but basically we play the game before we actually get out there. All our calls and what we do uh, is done, you know, during the week. Our practice plan is really our practice during the week. We make certain calls uh, during the week, and our kids are geared that if they have to make a certain call, even though we give them a, a certain defense, they can audible to it uh, to make sure that we're in the best possible defense against uh, the offense's best play. Our offensive coordinator is Greg Williams, a product of North Carolina State, and he's the man who gets us ready to try to move the ball on the opponents every week. And Greg, what do you and your staff go through getting ready and studying the opposing team? Well, Jim, uh, basically what we do is we spend, uh, we come in about noon on Sunday, and we spend uh, most of the time uh, evaluating the film that we trade with our opponents. In this case, 
uh, Texas. We, we trade four films with them and we break down their tendencies and study their defenses and their defensive personnel. And after we uh, accumulate this information, we post it, put it on a board, and we study it, and then we try to put, uh, put our basic offensive plays in, in the pass defenses. And then, of course, we always try to take advantage of whatever weakness we find in the, in the defense or in their personnel. And then we go from there, basically. Something I've noticed with this staff this year, Greg, is the fact that you uh, actually test the players each week. Yeah, we, uh, we audible quite a bit at the line of scrimmage. And so therefore, it's very important that the players know exactly what they're to do on all plays. And this way, we make sure that uh, all the information that we give them, they look at and they study. A lot of times, if you don't test them, you give them the information, you assume that they're going to look at it and study it. Well, we, we don't want to assume anything. We want to make sure that they know it. One more thing, we've gone to film exchange now as opposed to in, in previous years where you could actually scout another team. What variances or differences do you find there between the two? Well, I think uh, it's, it's important if you could have a person scout the game because they, they get a real feel for the team that you're going to play. When, when you just watch a film, you don't get a feel for their actual speed or, or how they rotate their secondary or, or things like that. There's a lot of things that the film won't tell you. And if you have a scout there that's at the game, well, he, he gives you a pretty good idea of the tempo and the pace of the game. Okay. That's Bob Junko, our defensive coordinator, and Greg Williams, our offensive coordinator. They're the men that get the frogs ready to go on Saturday. And we'll be back with more of the TCU football show right after this timeout. A new reservoir of energy or another dry hole? They'll know in a matter of hours instead of costly days with the help of a team from Gerhardt Owen. Using a Gerhardt Owen DDL computerized logging system, these men are analyzing this well right here at the drilling site, fast and accurately. DDL is helping revolutionize the oil production industry, and it's only one of the innovations that's putting Gerhardt Owen on the map. Around the world, the search for Plaza was once only an idea, a dream that 20 acres of land along the Trinity living and working environment that all Fort Worth could be proud of. And River Plaza started to become a reality as phase one was completed. It featured our first two garden offices and the beautiful Merrimack restaurant, now a great success because of its excellent food and exciting disco. Then we completed two more gardens, River Plaza office tower, an 18-story, 250-room luxury hotel, 70,000 square feet of retail shopping. So you can see, and to be, 